Hi and welcome to today's video which is going to be a quick Q&A video. I've had a few comments piling up on YouTube that were a little too long to answer in the comment section so I thought it might be better to answer them directly here on a video and dedicate it to those specific questions. So today's video let's answer a few of your questions but first do you like my mug? I got a little dinosaur mug. You know I like my mugs. So let's get into this. Hi and welcome back to the channel again. If you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. And secondly, this is gonna be a Q&A session from some of the comments that's been left on many of my videos. So I've scrolled through my videos and I've started to put aside on my phone here a few questions that I thought needed answering in a little bit more detail. But before we get into the video, I'd just like to remind you all that tickets for the Affiliate Gathering Expo are selling really well now. We're getting just a few months away from the event now and the pace is starting to pick up. So if you are interested in coming and meeting like-minded people, listen to some fantastic bloggers and some full-time creators, get them contacts, meet new friends, have fun, then get your tickets now. The link is in the description to the affiliate gathering. I'm hosting the event here in the UK on Friday the 20th of May and I hope you can all make it. If you can't come in person, there are online live streaming digital tickets still available. So let's get on with the video. So I've been noting them down on my phone, so please excuse me if I keep looking at my phone. And uh, I will read some of the names, some of the names I can't pronounce, so I won't read those ones because I don't want to Look a fool. Uh, but the first one is from CDB. You can read that one. And she says, uh, excellent video. I like hearing the bigger picture perspective on topics. Like many of your viewers, I'm trying to determine if affiliate marketing is right for me. Can you do a video on how to decide if it's the right career for you? Maybe cover the pros and cons versus a corporate job. Um, yeah, I mean, I've covered that in a few videos, to be honest, but some of the main pros I found with this business, it's the time aspect of things, how much you want to put into your business, how much you want time you want to take off from your business. It is very flexible. So, you know, if you get up and you don't feel very well, you're a little bit under the weather, you just simply don't have to work that day. You don't have to phone in to your boss and make some excuse and usually get ridiculed. You just literally take the day off and do whatever you wanted to do today, tomorrow. It's as simple as that. So the time and the freedom aspect of it is definitely one of the biggest pros about this business. Another pro as well I feel is I like businesses where you are rewarded for your hard work. So the harder you work, potentially the more money you will earn. Whereas often with a corporate job, the harder you work, the more money you make for others. And yeah, I know you can climb that corporate ladder, but it's not always like that. I can remember some weeks and months where I really put in some serious work at my previous job and it didn't really benefit me at all. You know, I went above and beyond my pay grade and I still really didn't see any benefit from it. Whereas here, if I put the extra time and effort into my business, I usually see some sort of growth, whether that be through traffic, more blog posts, more YouTube videos, whatever that may be, the more time and effort I put in, I am rewarded for it. And I like that because I'm the only one to blame then. If, if I slack off and I just work one day a week or something, then I can expect to get a limited success. I'm going to see fewer blog posts on my websites. I'm going to see less traffic. Therefore, my business isn't going to grow. However, if I put 70, 80 hour weeks in and I'm pumping out content like crazy, I can expect to see the reward for that. Although you'll probably burn out, so maybe don't suggest doing that. But taking it seriously and putting some time and effort into your business should see a reward. So there are many, many benefits of doing this business. The friendship and the network that I've made across this business, talking to other bloggers, other YouTubers, is also incredible. It's just as good as working at a corporate job. And there are lots of areas, if you're doing affiliate marketing rather than just blogging, there are lots of areas you can cover. So topics are endless, your projects are endless, there's always something new to keep you occupied. So it's a fantastic business to get in. It is becoming more and more popular, so I do think it will get more and more competitive. But at the moment, I still think there's room for many new affiliate marketers in the business. 
And the next question I have is from Daniel. And Daniel says, where does the 48 multiplier come from? Is that a standard multiplier for pricing up affiliate marketing websites? So I think what Daniel's referring to is maybe one of my videos where I've given a valuation for one of my websites. Now, commonly in this industry, a valuation of a website is a multiple of the earnings, usually over a six month period. So if your website's been earning $1,000 for six months, then your average earning is $1,000. And then you would multiply that by a multiplier. That can range from anything from, I've seen it as low as 25, but I've seen it as high as 55. So that would mean, let's say your website was in the higher bracket and it was a multiple of 50, then it would be 50 times your average monthly earnings of $1,000. Therefore, a $50,000 price range would be put on your website. Now, like I say, it varies between the niche. Is it a seasonal niche? Is it a, a competitive niche? Is it a niche everybody's in? Therefore, it might be a smaller multiplier. There are lots of different reasons why that multiplier would adjust. But a very, very standard multiplier is between 35 and 40. I think anybody selling a website at the moment, you know, I've sold a few last year and I plan to sell some more this year. And I think a good multiplier for a buyer and a seller is between 35 and 40. That means you have enough profit from your business that you're happy with the sale but also the new buyer has got a margin for growth as well so you know they could just basically tidy up that website add a bit more content and sell it for a 47 48 multiplier and instantly flip that website so if that is their intention there is room for both of you if you're selling it at a multiplier between 35 and 40. so there's no industry standard however like i say 35 is pretty common And the next comment I have here is from Coconut Pete. And Coconut Pete says, Google isn't going to be around much longer, methinks. How many people do Google searches and read blogs anymore? For me, maybe that's 10% of my time and the rest is on YouTube. Now, again, I think that is from a comment that I made on a video where I said video content is going to be really prevalent in the years to come. And I still do believe that. And I made an analogy where I said, Think about your day-to-day. Think about how many blog posts you read in a worded format. So how many 2,000-word blog posts did you read from start to finish today compared to how many TikTok videos did you watch? How many YouTube videos did you watch? How often did you go on Facebook? I think we see and listen to more and more videos and imagery-focused content, more than we do written content. Now, I think it will go side by side. I think blog written content will always be around. You know, take books, for instance. We have Kindles, don't we, where you can read a book, you know, on a tablet. But my wife prefers a physical book in her hands. She likes paperback books. So I do think written content is always going to be around. But I do think video content will creep up and start to catch it up, especially as technology like VR and stuff like that becomes more and more commonplace in the household. I think it will become more and more popular. So yeah, yeah, I think Google will be around. I don't think Google's going to be out of the picture. I think just Google will be the forefront leader in video technology through whether that may be YouTube, TikTok, social media. I think Google is definitely going to be around for a long time to come. And the next is from a regular on my channel, and that's uh, Thomas, or Thomas, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, Can you make a video about taxes that you paid in 2021? Now, this gentleman asks this question quite a lot, and he's obviously got some concerns about taxes. I don't make videos about taxes, and I'll tell you why. I am pretty new to blogging, and I don't do my own taxes. I outsource my bookkeeping each week to a bookkeeper, a a lady who's very good at bookkeeping. And then I have an accountant that takes care of my taxes. Now, I have only been a full-time blogger for one year. 2020 was my first full year blogging. And that is the first year I have submitted some full accounts as a limited company. Now, the reason I don't do tax videos is because, number one, I've not had my first tax bill yet. So, you know, I'm scared to death what that's going to be. But I have some money set aside for it. But I also know that there are different laws in different countries. So if I went on this channel and gave you loads of tax advice about blogging, 
it may be totally irrelevant to 90% of my audience, which is based in the US. And I haven't a clue about doing blogging and taxes in the US. So it would be pretty pointless me doing a video about my taxes because it might not be relevant for you. Now, if you want, I will, when I get my first tax bill, I will maybe include it in my income report. I may just say, you know, last year I made X amount of money and I paid X amount in taxes. But again, if you have a very, very good accountant, you should pay probably less tax because it's been offset against some of your business assets. And again, I do not know exactly how it works. I literally just make as much money as I can and then I tell my accountant what I've made and they deal with the legal aspects of it. And then you just sit back and wait for a brown envelope to drop through your door telling you how much tax you've got to pay. So when I know how much that figure is, I will let you know. And the next question we have is from, I hope I get this right, Tasos. Tassos, I'm sorry. Like I say, if you get offended by me calling you the wrong name, then I do apologize because I am terrible at pronouncing names. And you ask, what do you mean by a generic review ranks better than yours? Now, I know exactly what this gentleman means. So I have an article which I class as one of my best articles I've ever written. I purchased the product. I tested it out for many weeks. I wrote a two or 3,000 word blog post. I made a YouTube video. I did exactly what Google says you should do. I listed all the unique features about the products and all the cons about the products that nobody else has spotted. I was finding issues with this product that nobody else has found. And I thought that I'd written the most unique piece of content possible. However, that article is not number one. It is a bottom of page one. And I find that surprising because the content that's above me, which I call generic reviews, where this is content that people have not purchased the product. They've just gone to Amazon. They've read a few reviews. They've watched a couple of YouTube videos, possibly my video, and then they've written a blog post about it. And those pieces of content should not be doing well. Google says that they will not rank very well. However, they're above me. Now, there are many factors we know to ranking pieces of content, domain age, authority, backlinks, word length, oh, just all sorts. And maybe it's something like that that's making them rank above my unique piece of content. So I call these generic blog post reviews because, like I said, they've not purchased the product. They've not done a very detailed in-depth review. However, because they have a, a higher authority or they have more backlinks than me, they are ranking higher than me. Now, given time, I may climb above them. Google may do a crawl or a search on that topic on my website and think, okay, yeah, he is very unique and I love his content and it may rank me above there. But at the minute, my unique piece of content, my best piece of content is still not ranking in the top three, which is a surprise to me. The video is doing very well, don't get me wrong. I rank very, very high for the video, but not for the written content. So yeah, so that's what I mean by generic reviews. They're reviews where people have not purchased the product and they're writing very similar content to what's already out there. And the next question we have is from Mech Perfect. I think I've got that one right. Do you prefer to work lonely? Or if someone asks you, do you prefer to work in a partnership on a blog? And would you accept a partnership? If so, what is the investment ratio? Now, this is really interesting. It's a great question because I am in partnership with about three websites, I believe it is. And pretty much is a 50-50 partnership on the setup costs and the content. Now, normally it's people reaching out to me that says, can I work with you, Carl? Can I do a website with you? And I only really do it to people who are personal friends of mine, where I can nip round to their home and work on the site with them, or we can pick up the phone and we can chat about ideas. I don't do it randomly with people I don't know. So if you are thinking of going to partnership with anybody on a website, make sure it's somebody you really know and really trust. Again, I don't know the legalities of setting up contracts and things like that. You probably should have a contract in place if you're going into partnership, but these are people I really, really trust. And what I've said to them is, okay, I will do all the keyword research for you. We will use my writers, but we'll split the cost of the content and the hosting, etc. Now, normally they do the work, so they will upload and do all the editing on the website. I will just do, like I say, do come up with the ideas, the niche, the keywords, my writers, my team, and they do the physical hands-on the site work. 
And then at the end of the day, we split the profits 50-50. So, so far I'm working with two friends of mine. Uh, we've not had any massive successes with the website, so we've not run into any complications. All the websites are pretty new and they are climbing up the rankings. They are doing okay. And hopefully we'll make some money this year. And then we might get into the realms of, you know, questions. So do we keep the site? Do we sell the site? I'm doing more work than you. You're doing more work than me. Then we might come into some troubles. But at the minute, it's all pretty amicable. It's all going very smooth. But I suggest if you are going to go into a partnership with someone on a website, you do get a contract and you do trust that person. And the final question we have is from Paylab. And you ask, can I use YouTube's free music library for making videos on Ezoic platform without any copyright issues? So I think this question is from a video that I did about using videos on the Ezoic dashboard to earn more ad revenue. So you create a video and you can place it on your website. Ezoic can show ads on that video. Now this gentleman's asking, can you use YouTube's music on them videos and you won't get a copyright strike. So if it's free music that's listed on YouTube under the Creative Commons license, you can use it. However, I do think you have to give them credit for the music, where it's come from, who was the actual creator. So I'm not sure how you would display that using Ezoic. However, I just simply use Canva. Nobody cares about the music on Ezoic videos. They just It's just the image, so you can show display ads on that image. Nobody really bothers about the music. In fact, you can set it to mute, and I don't think I have music playing on many of my videos, to be honest. It's just the video itself. But just go into Canva, create a 30, 40 second video, use Canva's free music to overlay on the video, upload it to Ezoic, to your dashboard, and you can then make ad revenue from that video. So it's a real good way of making a little bit of extra ad revenue. The RPMs are not as big as normal display ads, but it's added on, it's extra on top of your income. So why would you not use it? So that's it for today. Just a few questions there that, like I said, I thought needed a more in-depth answer. And hopefully, if you've asked me a question, I've answered you. If not, I hope I've answered you under the YouTube platform. Feel free to comment on this video if you have any more questions. And if you're new to the channel and you have enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, like the video, and then you'll get to see more Q&A videos I do around blogging, building niche websites, passive income, and making money online. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video. Sleep. What if I lost touch?